In this video, I'm going to show you the six most common mistakes I see new vloggers making. You're going to want to watch this all the way to the end. But before you do, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything that comes up after this. I'm talking specifically about sailing vlogs because that's what I do, but this will apply to pretty much any type of vlog. You're probably wondering, why should I listen to this guy? He's not a big shot. He doesn't have a million subscribers. And that's exactly why you should listen to me because I'm right at that point where I'm just learning what I've been doing wrong. And as a result, I am right there in touch with it and can explain it to other people who haven't quite figured it out yet. A lot of these pros have been doing this for so long that they've forgotten what it took to get over those initial humps. So let's take a minute to clearly define the problem. While your video is running, there is a list of videos down the side of other people trying to lure your viewers away. You have to make sure that your video is interesting enough, compelling enough, the entire duration that none of those videos takes them away from watching you. Mistake number one that I see people making very often is long, boring intros. The simple fact of the matter is, is nobody cares what your name is, nobody cares about your dog, the name of your boat, any of these things. People just don't care until you give them a reason to care. And that reason to care is not your name, it's not your face, it's not a picture of your boat, it's not a video of you sailing that could just be stock footage. None of these things are gonna pull people in. In fact, they're gonna bore people. If you've used Netflix recently, you noticed that there is a skip intro button. Even the big name TV show makers have realized that people do not want to watch introductions. Your intro should be no longer than five seconds. The number two mistake I see happening very common is a complete lack of a teaser. A teaser comes before your intro and it somehow tells the viewer why they should watch the video. Without it, this lead up part you'll have going into your video is going to bore the viewer. If they know what is coming up, that lead up won't seem boring to them. Your teaser could be as simple as, in this video we start a cargo cult and barely get out with our lives. Now I feel pressured to make a video about a cargo cult or no one will take my channel seriously. Or it could be more complicated and a little more sophisticated with a montage of images and that sort of thing. The point is, is the teaser needs to be quick and it needs to accomplish one goal. It needs to tell the viewer why they should stick around. The teaser always comes before the intro. You want one sentence for the teaser, five seconds for the intro so they see the branding from one video to the next. Don't try to accomplish anything more with these two things. Make sure your teaser tells them why they should watch the whole video and then make sure your intro comes up and tells them where they are so that when they see other similar videos they make the connection. The next most common problem I see is something that Casey Neistat, who you should listen to because he's one of the if not the most successful YouTuber to date, and he said nobody cares about your time lapse. Now I want to extend that to nobody cares about your slow-mo, nobody cares about anything that could be stock footage, the simple fact of the matter is, is this stuff is just not that interesting. It's a little hard to get through your head. When you're on the boat, every single time that dolphins come up and swim off your bow, it's beautiful and interesting to you on the boat. As a viewer watching YouTube videos, after the 20th time you've seen those dolphins, it's just not interesting anymore. I'm not saying you shouldn't put it in there. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, but it should not be the focal point of your video. There's always exceptions to these rules. If you've made a time lapse of you growing a beard over a period of six months, that's cool enough to rate as its own thing. However, a typical time lapse of the sun setting or boats swinging an anchor or somebody painting something, these are all over. They're all over the videos. Everybody else has done it. Before you make a time lapse or a slow motion sequence, take a minute to think, is this something that's been done a hundred times before? Is this time lapse somehow way more interesting that it deserves the attention you're giving it? Just because you took a long time to set up and shoot doesn't mean it needs to be on the thing. There are a lot of good uses for time lapse, slow mos, things like this. They're best used as what's called B-roll. If you don't understand what B-roll is for, you need to look it up. It's it probably something that I'll cover in a completely dedicated video because it's an important concept that I see a lot of people struggling with. But it can be a transition between we finished up this day and we started the next day. A few seconds 
Again, five seconds seems to be the rule. About five seconds of time lapse of swinging an anchor is all you need to move on. Or if you say, oh, we sailed through the night or we sailed all day, five seconds of dolphins on the front makes a nice transition to, okay, now we're anchoring. Any more than that starts to get boring to the viewer after they've seen it a bunch of times on a bunch of other channels. One of the biggest problems I see is videos that are just too long. Let's face it, a lot of us, if we're trying to put out a video every week or we're trying to do better, a lot of people recommend, can you put out more than one video a week? That's a lot of pressure. And for some reason, so many people are making these 15 minute videos. And the problem I see with them is they've only got about five minutes of interesting content in them. Here's the thing, go to the YouTube analytics, look at your retention times. If people are watching less than 50% of your videos, you probably have too much in there that's not interesting. They're probably just getting bored. And you may be thinking, well, who cares? If they watch five minutes of the 15 minutes, I'm still getting watch time. But the problem is, is that five minutes isn't all at the beginning. You have maybe a minute of interesting and then two minutes of not interesting and then maybe another minute or something like that, which means instead of watching five minutes, they might only watch a minute before they get bored and wander off. Keep in mind that when your video is playing, there's a list of videos on the side that very easily might look more interesting. They're there trying to lure your viewer away. You've got to work really hard to keep your viewer there. Having a video where viewers watch an entire five minute video is way better than viewers watching only two minutes of a 15 minute video. And it also takes less work for you to do. Cut the fluff out. Everything in your video has to pass a simple test. Is it interesting enough to prevent the viewer from looking at those other videos on the side and maybe wandering off and watching something else. Another problem that I see oh so common is people don't set up the shots. Here's the thing. If you're just doing this for fun, you shouldn't even be bothering with any of the things I'm talking about in here. Just make whatever video you want, send it off to your friends and families and enjoy yourself. But if you're trying to get views, you're trying to bring in new people, if you're trying to succeed, really succeed as a YouTuber, you need to take it seriously. You need to act like a professional. And that means a lot of this is going to be work. And when I say work, I mean hiking up the hill, setting up the camera, hiking back down the hill, hiking up the hill so you get the shot and then taking the camera down, setting up the tripod, making sure that angles are right, making sure you've got good light on it. If you're doing how-to videos, this means every project you do is gonna take a lot longer. It takes a while to get the camera set up, to get a tripod set up, to get adequate lighting, especially on a boat where space is cramped. You might have a hard time finding a good angle where you can really show what's happening, but you need to do it. If you find yourself saying, I don't know if you can see this, <laughs> that's a good indicator that you're making a video that people are not going to watch from beginning to end. When they're looking for a video on how to do something, they're going to look at somebody else's. Take the time to set up good lighting. Good lighting is incredibly important. Take the time to get the camera angle so that you can actually see. Yes, in cramped spaces, it's a pain in the neck. It might take quite a while. It might take longer to get the shot than it does to actually do the work. As sailors, we know we get out there, we're trying to record stuff, and the wind ruins the sound. Maybe we don't all have one of those great microphone things that keeps the wind noise out. If you find that you've taken a shot that you want to keep and the audio is damaged, overdub it. Don't leave that in. Never apologize for bad audio because never put bad audio in. There's never a reason not to overdub. You don't want the person having to be reading the screen. They might be listening. The number one problem I see, and this is the most common problem. This problem is so common that I see lots of very, what people would call successful YouTubers, falling prey to this, and it's music. Music is very deceptive. There is so much high quality music that you can get for either relatively inexpensive or outright free, royalty free music. There's numbers of sites. YouTube itself has a huge library of royalty free music, most, much of which is very good. The problem is, is this makes it very easy to feel like you've created a very professional video. The problem is, is that it seems like a professional video, but it's lacking something. If you have a sequence in your video that has more than about five seconds with nothing on the audio but music, you're 
probably using music as a crutch and you're doing it wrong. It's quite possible that you should be doing a voiceover on that section, or maybe that section isn't good enough to be in your video in the first place at all. I recommend that you go 180 degrees in the other direction, make your videos with no music in them. I know it's gonna seem hard, but you're removing that crutch. Once you find that you can make a video that you're proud of that doesn't use stock music, then you can go back and you'll understand where it's okay to put it and where it's not. Another problem I see with this is kind of a combination where you'll get what I call talking head syndrome. You'll get a video where somebody will say, and then we hiked up the hill. And then there'll be a video of them hiking up the hill with music play. Why not get rid of the music, get rid of the view of my face talking while I say walking up the hill, and put voiceover of me saying, and we had to hike up the hill while the video of hiking up the hill is going on. This makes for a video that's very interesting. It locks the viewer in. There's so much going on. You're talking to them. They're seeing things. With the music, unless you're making a music video, that royalty-free music, it, it's pretty good, but it's not good enough to stand on its own. Take it out, and if you are going to use it, reduce it. Think about it. Would you want to watch this if the music wasn't there? If you don't, then it doesn't belong to be there. Don't use the music as a crutch to try to justify it. Here's your bonus tip. Go into YouTube analytics, look at the watch time. If your videos are seeing less than 50% average view, make shorter videos. If you're making a 15 minute video and people are only watching 30% of it, you should probably only be making a five minute video. Once you can get people watching 75, 60% of a five minute video, then you can try to make longer videos. But I recommend that you don't put the effort in. Let's be honest, it's a lot of work to edit and put together 15 minutes of footage. If people are only watching two or three minutes of that, that effort is wasted. Why not make five minutes? If they're only watching two or three minutes of it, you're still better off on this time save, but I'll bet they'll watch more because the good stuff will be denser. There won't be as much fluff and padding in there that makes people want to go watch something else. Make shorter videos, watch your average watch time. When you see it getting high enough, then you're ready to start making longer videos again. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree with everything I said, if you have some additional things that I forgot, or if this helped you in some way, I'd love to hear about it. While you're down near the comments, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If enough people like this, I'll go ahead and do more videos like this and I'll try to keep up by explaining what I'm learning as I'm learning it. So it helps everybody who's trying to make these videos.